What's up, everybody? I'm out here in San Gabriel Valley, Southern California, Zone 10, and I'm transplanting mango trees today. This is the toughest test for the sweet tart mango seedling tree that I'm going to show you in a second. This is January. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. I'm out here back in California, Southern California, Zone 10, and I'm transplanting trees. I planted a sweet tart mango seedling tree at, my, at a relative's house. I'm here at their relative's new house. I just went to the relative's old house and dug up that mango tree and I brought it here to her new house and I'm going to plant it here at her new house. This is the toughest test yet because we're here in January. It's one of the coldest months out here in Southern California. Subtropical, tropical mango trees, of course, they don't like the cold. And of course, no tree likes a transplant. So this is going to be the toughest test yet. That's why I want to document this. I want to show you if this tree lives or if it doesn't because I love transplanting trees. And I love seeing how they perform. Let me show you the sweet tart mango seedling. That is a sweet tart mango seedling tree. And look, here's one tree. Here's another tree. And here's the third. And you're probably thinking, well, I thought you just said, AJ, you just said you're transplanting a tree. I see three. Well, that's the power of the sweet tart mango, especially if you plant one from seed. It's a polyembryonic seed, meaning it's multiple embryos, multiple trees from one seed. And that's the power of the sweet tart mango, one of, the, one of its many powers. And each of those, at least one of those, should produce fruit exactly like the mother plant or something very, very close. I've planted a lot of sweet tart mango seedlings and I've gotten fruit from many of them. I can't tell the difference between the true sweet tart and one from seed. And that's why I encourage everyone to plant a sweet tart mango tree from seed you're going to get multiple trees multiple chances of survival okay so and you can separate them like i just separated them now all right you can separate them and plant trees from one seed in different places guys guys how did you think i did do you think this tree is going to live do you think these trees will live let me know in the comment section if you think these trees will survive a transplant here in january one of the coldest months out here in Southern California, Zone 10. I'm gonna plant the tree, and then I'm gonna talk about some tips, tri tips, tricks, tactics, and strategies you can use to help a subtropical, tropical tree survive a transplant. Let's go, let's get started, let's make it happen. Stay tuned, here we go. All right, these trees, uh, I'm gonna guess were about five years old. Yeah, five years old, planted from seed, and that's the root system. I hope it lives. I got, got a lot more of the root system than I did last time when I did a transplant video. But these things had a deep taproot and I cut back a lot of the taproot. I hope these trees live. And here's my hole. Let's see. This hole I'm going to say is about four feet wide and about three feet. Three, three feet wide, four feet long. Yeah, that's about it. Native soil only. Nothing special in the mix. I'm not adding to anything. Nothing. No amendments. No fertilizers. No... Nothing, no compost, nothing fancy, just native dirt. This is great dirt, by the way. It's very sandy, no clay. I don't love it. Actually, I don't even see any clay. Mostly sand, a little bit of rocks. See rocks, a lot of sand, some roots for other trees, which is fine, no problem. And that's what mangoes want. They don't want any kind of rich soil. Mangoes don't really like a rich soil. In fact, mangoes grow in some of the crappiest soil. If you go to these subtropical, tropical countries, you see mango trees growing in abandoned lots, in between buildings, in parking lots, all over the place. They don't need any kind of extra special attention, I don't think. But when it comes to a transplant here, let's see what happens. I'm going to put these trees in the ground. And all right, guys, trees are in. They are in the ground. One, two, and three separated. And now right next to each other, less than a feet apart. And you're probably thinking, why are you planting these trees so close? Well, I think they like to be really close to each other. We're here in we're here in a not we're here in a climate where mango trees don't get huge. They can get big, but they don't get huge. So they're they're gonna be okay, right? Right, literally right next to each other. And that's my planting style. We don't have a lot of room here, so the mango trees will go right next to each other. And look how I built a berm. Berm this is like a place, a pool kind of, where the water will stay and it won't flow away from the trees. And the water will hit the roots and they'll stay within bounds. And we're watering the trees in now. And I All cut right. the trees back significantly. Basically, I cut the trees in half. 
actually more than half. They were like this much taller, but I saved all the branches. Some of the branches were saved for scions because I can graft this seedling onto other trees, but I'm going to use these in a strategic way. That's going to give this chance a great, they're going to give this tree a great chance to survive. And you're going to see that in a second. All right, guys, cutting away the leaves. These are the leaves and branches that I cut, cut off these trees. And I'm putting the leaves back. And this is going to be mulch. This is a leaf layer that keeps the tree warm in the winter, cool in the summer, and keeps the roots insulated. I wouldn't even dig this tree up if I didn't know I was going to put mulch here. Mulch is the key to this whole operation. You have to have mulch or else the trees would die. Uh, I don't think they would survive the transplant. A, a layer of leaves, a layer of its own leaves, which is the best thing, a layer of its own leaves under the tree is the best thing to help this tree live and survive. A nice leaf layer like you see here. I'm going to spread it all around the area where the roots are. A nice leaf layer of mulch, and that's going to give the roots insulation. It's going to help them survive in a colder weather. All right? All right, guys, the transplanting is done. I put down a heavy, heavy, thick layer of mulch. This is at least six inches. I'm keep going, and I'm not... Okay, now I'm at the soil. I'm going to go... I'm going to say this is at least five inches of mulch, a heavy layer. I put the mango leaves first, and I found a trash can full of just old leaf leaf mulch from fallen trees down around the root zone of the mangoes i think these trees look good we're here four hours after the transplant and the leaves are still happy i would be worried and concerned if the leaves were down and droopy like this and looking really sad but this is trees still perky they're still looking pretty perky and that's a sign that's telling me that the trees that the transplant for now is going pretty well fingers crossed i'm happy but the first 72 hours 72 hours of a transplant that's the toughest test the first 72 hours of a transplant will tell us everything we need to know i will check back with you i'll come back 72 hours later and i'll let you know how these trees look after 72 hours three days let's see how they do again january Subtropical, tropical mango tree out here in San Gabriel Valley. A transplant going on. Let's see how they do. I'm really excited. This is the sweet tart mango. Guys, sweet tart mango from a seed. That's this. If you get one of those, that's a legacy tree, a generational tree, a family tree, a tree that gets passed down from generation to generation. That's how good it is. That is worth keeping in the family. It's worth having. And to me, it's the most valuable thing in this whole house, okay? <laughs> but that's, that's just me. And uh, I'm sure some other people feel the same way. But the sweet tart mango is special, is what I'm trying to ex express to you, okay? Guys, let's check back. 72 hours, I'll let you know how the tree goes, and then we'll wrap up this video. And we're back 72 hours later, three days later. This is what the trees look like now. That's how they're looking. They are looking good. I'm very, very encouraged and very, very happy. The leaves are still perky. They're not sad and down like I was expecting. That's cold damage. That's a little bit of cold damage too right there where my thumb is and where my thumb is. That's cold damage. That is cold damage too where my thumb is. There is some cold damage here on the tree, but overall the trees look good overall. I think this transplant is going in the right direction. It has been cold, okay? Cold for this area. I'm going to say low 40s at night, even some into the high 30s at night, the last few nights here in the San Gabriel Valley. I, this toughest test for the mango trees, tough test for the mango trees, but I think so far they're doing really, really well. They're passing the test, facing tough, cold conditions for mangoes out here, and I'm encouraged. I'm happy about it. Let me show you some other trees I transplanted. I transplanted this young Suriname cherry that I cut back significantly. You can barely see the tree. Not a lot of leaves left, but I transplanted the Suriname cherry. I transplanted another Suriname cherry. And there's another Suriname cherry over there that I transplanted as well. Guys, there's a trend here. Let me show you the trend and what I think is very effective in helping 
tropical, subtropical trees like these Suriname cherries and mangoes get transplanted again. It's a mulch. It all comes down to the mulch. You can use incandescent lights, wrap it around the tree trunks and keep it warm at night. That works very, very effectively. But down to the basics, down to nature, nature's way is straight up mulch leaf layer. This stuff right here is the difference maker. And look, someone threw coffee grounds. Wow, the people that live here know what's going on. I think they watch my videos. I like to throw coffee grounds too. They threw coffee grounds and they also, again, thick layer of mulch. Guys, mulch is like a blanket. It's like a blanket for a tree in the winter. And then in the summer, it's like insulation. Keeps the tree cool in the summer, warm in the winter. It's like a nice, comfortable blanket that the tree can sleep, its roots can sleep under in the winter. And it helps them survive through the winter. And then on the flip side, in the summer, it becomes like something that locks the moisture in, keeps moisture high in the tree, cuts your water costs, mulch has so many uses and as that leaf matter breaks down it's feeding the trees constantly giving them nutrients so mulch checks off so many boxes and it's absolutely critical when you want to transplant a tree okay ladies and gentlemen if you like this video if you like the information you just heard remember to give me a like and then subscribe and then comment as usual and as usual thank you for watching and go out and do what you love bye bye